Hello and welcome to freephotoshop.com and this week's tutorial on how to remove a motion blur. Now if you're using Photoshop CS2 or better, then you can go straight ahead and use the Smart Sharpen filter available. That's by far the best way to go. And if you're unsure about how to use the Smart Sharpening filter, then you're probably best viewing my other tutorial available here on freephotoshop.com entitled Smart Sharpening. What we're going to be doing here is taking a look at how to remove a slight amount of motion blur if you haven't got access to the smart sharpening filter. Okay, I'm going to kick off here by opening up this image entitled Plant 1, just to show you that there is a limit as to what we can fix. An image with this much motion blur is impossible to correct. No point even trying. We're simply not going to be able to bring back the information that we've lost and make it look credible. Okay, next I'm going to open up another image entitled Plant 2, which it is possible to improve. Okay, I'm going to start off by dragging the one and only layer down here to the new layers icon to duplicate the layer in the layers palette. You can also do that by hitting Ctrl J on the keyboard. Now with the copied layer selected, I'm going to change the blend mode to overlay. Then I'm going to go up here to the filters menu and select stylize and then select emboss. Now what we're actually doing here is determining the angle and level of embossing that we want to imply. However to us we're going to think of this dialog box as containing the settings we need to remove our motion blur. Now we're probably best not using the preview pane to measure what we're doing. I've never really found that to be too useful. Instead I suggest we make sure our preview checkbox is turned on and then use the main image to look at what's happening when we increase and decrease the various settings. So let's go ahead and see if we can improve this image by reducing the motion blur. Firstly we'll need to try and somehow identify which direction the blur is moving. And it doesn't have to be exact, but the closer you can get it, the better the results you'll achieve. Now there isn't any science to this, it's just going to be one of those things you'll need to look at and take an educated guess, I'm afraid. In this image, I'm going to go with an angle of around about 45 degrees. Next we have a height value, which is going to work in exactly the same way as the radius value inside the Unsharp Mask or Smart Sharpen Filters. So I'm, in this case I'm going to be determining how many pixels wide the motion blur actually is. Similar to the radius value as well, we're going to want to keep this value fairly small. I'm going to use a value of say around about 4 pixels, that should be pretty good. Finally we have an amount value which you've probably guessed by now is the same as the amount value inside the sharpening tools. So we're going to be affecting the strength of the emboss or in this case the strength of the sharpening. I'm going to go with a fairly high value here um, say around about 200 pixels should be pretty good. Once we've finished here I'm going to click OK to accept the changes. Now I've also got the option of changing the blending mode of the layer. So say for instance I didn't want the modifications to be as dramatic then I can change the blend mode to soft light. On the other hand, if I wanted to increase the harshness of the sharpening, then I could change the blend mode to hard light. These blending modes could have been applied at any stage of the tutorial, by the way. I could also have left the blending mode set to normal until after I had applied sorry, the emboss filter. No problems with that, it's just a different way of working. OK, I'm going to make sure I've got my blending mode set to overlay. Now because I've made some changes since I applied this filter, the fade command up here in the edit menu is unavailable. But what I can do here to finish things off is to select the copied layer in the layers palette, the one which I applied the filter to, and then grab the opacity controls over here, and then just reduce the opacity of the layer until I see something I like. I'm going to leave the opacity set to around about 70%. I think that's pretty good. Okay, as I said before, if you've got the Smart Sharpen filter, then use that to improve problems caused by motion blurs. If you haven't, 
then this little trick is the next best thing. Well, I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. Thanks very much for watching.